Here's a passage number 20 in the Tao Te Ching on exactly that point, and I want to read it. He says, give up learning and put an end to your troubles. I mean, doesn't that sound absolutely counterintuitive? He says it right there. Give up learning and put an end to your troubles. So you're all going to go, okay, I'm out of college, Mom. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> I'm done. I'm out of here. Well, let's come to a better understanding of what he means. He says, is there a difference between yes and no? Is there a difference between good and evil? Must I fear what others fear? What nonsense. He's saying a few things here. He's pointing to the relativity that we talked about before. He's also pointing to that habituated response that most of us have when we judge. Like because our culture hates some other group, um, we're going to hate that group too. I mean, I hear it a lot here, you know, in the United States, you know, since 9-11. You know, people are suspicious of, um, like, the whole Muslim group, which is, it's absolute absurdity. I remember when I went to Morocco, I mean, these people took me into their homes, the kindest, sweetest people on the planet, you know. Terrorists are a small, select group of freaks. They're not, um, <laughs> they, they're really, they don't belong to any religion in a way. You know, it's just, it's and so he's saying, listen to what he's saying, and how does that fit in? But we have these cultural kind of knee-jerk reactions. Yeah, blah, blah, let's hate them. Yeah, let's eat this. Yeah, let's do that. But, but hang on, because if we were allowed to get away from that and to live by instinct, perhaps we wouldn't follow with those knee-jerk reactions and follow you know, with those kinds of snap judgments, right? Listen, must I fear what others fear? What nonsense. Other people are contented, enjoying the sacrificial feast. In spring, some go to the park and climb the terrace. But I alone am drifting, not knowing where I am, like a newborn babe before it learns to smile. I am alone without a place to go. Others have more than they need, but I alone have nothing. I am a fool. Oh, yes, I'm confused. Others are clear and bright. I am dim and weak. Others are sharp and clever. I am dull and stupid. I drift like the waves of the sea, without direction, like the restless wind. Everyone else is busy, but I am aimless and depressed. I am different. I am nourished by the great mother. There's that female reference I told you about. Does it seem vague? It should. You can read this thing 50 times and get more out of it each time. They're like little poems, but they're endless in their wisdom. You get more out of it every time. What on earth is he talking about? What on earth is he talking about? He's always talking about nature. But he's also saying to accept the difference, to accept the relativity in the universe, to not follow that um, societal kind of conditioning, which again is why he was so suspicious of formal education and so suspicious of Confucian ethics, because they were forced. And there's something very artificial in that. I mean, you see it again on number 18. This is a short one. He says, when the great Tao is forgotten, kindness and morality arise. Stop there, just those two lines. When the great Tao is forgotten, kindness and morality arise. So it's not that we have no place for morality or he's not um, supportive of morality. No, it's just that he thinks it can't be forced. It arrives naturally. Virtue grows naturally and spontaneously when allowed to, when we're left alone, right? When wisdom and intelligence are born, the great pretense begins. What is he saying? When wisdom and intelligence are born, the great pretense begins. It's really a direct shot at Confucian ethics. Once we invent it as a thing, as a thing to be taught, as a thing to cram down our throats, be like this, and everybody be like this, and everybody feel this way. Those are bad. Those are bad people over there. This is good. You need to eat this. It, then 
we stop, we start to lose our way. You know, another example just popped into <coughs> mind. You know they did a study about Tylenol. This is really interesting. You know what they found? That when you take Tylenol for a fever, the fever actually lasts longer. They did this study, and I'm gonna get in trouble again. No, mom. <laughs> Professor Pisada said to not, obviously if it gets too high, consult your doctor. See, there's my disclaimer, just like those commercials, right? <laughs> but they did this study and they found out that the group that didn't take Tylenol um, actually did better and that the fever was shorter lived. So it's like the body had a reason for developing this fever and the fever was doing its thing and the body was going through its cycle and things were playing out their course, the due course of nature and we didn't interfere with it, so it did its thing and it healed on its own. It's, it's really Wu Wei in action. You're letting it operate. You're using the wisdom of nature to make that decision of when to do something and when not to do something, and sometimes it's wise not to do something, right? In that sense, the Tylenol is seen as, as a sort of violence. We always wanna do, fix it, take something. Oh, you got a stomach ache? Here, take something, right? We want to do. It's this, we've been kind of triggered into this and triggered into our opinions about what to eat, what to take, what to do when we're sick, right? Because the commercials told us, and even our parents, because they told us and society told us, and this is what you're supposed to do. And so that's, look at this. When wisdom and intelligence are born, the great pretense begins. Then you're not acting naturally. You're simply acting as you were conditioned to act. When there is no peace within the family, filial piety and devotion arise. It's like he's poking a little finger to Confucius's filial piety, right? When the country is confused and in chaos, loyal ministers appear. But it becomes this game of politics. You wouldn't need to have someone come and fix it if we were living by wisdom in the first place, right? So he's saying there is filial piety. It's not that there's not, or it's not that it's bad. It's that it comes as a natural result of what? Of just being human, of being natural. What do you guys think? about what we've talked about today.